morning, everybody. Welcome back to the Urbact E-University. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for staying with us for this, our seventh session of the Urbact E-University. Uh, we're going into the final stretch this week. Uh, this is the, the session today. Then our final session will be on Thursday. So today we're going to be focusing on sharing, on measuring results. And I'm going to hand over in a minute to Bela Casey, who's our e-manager for today, who will talk to us a bit about one of the final parts of your action planning process when you take the actions that you defined in the last session and think about how to make them measurable, what the different elements are to give you a results framework that's really going to help you to understand progress in your city, in your network, in your action plan. And I think also these are really good skills to have in other projects, also in your own life, understanding your progress in different spheres. And Bella will take us through that very shortly. Uh, could I have the next slide, please, Bella? Thank you. So just a little teaser ahead for our grand finale on Thursday. We're going to give you uh, detailed instructions at the end of this session today about joining on Thursday, because it might be slightly different. It's going to be a slightly different format, but we'll tell you about that later. But in the meantime, what we'd like you to do is really showcase the results of your learning, what you've been doing in the past few weeks through the plenaries, through your working groups, through your learning memos, both as a group and independently. So we're going to be looking out in the next few days. We're going to be looking at the mirror boards, anything you have shared publicly on Facebook or Twitter. We'd like you to share more with us and please use the stickers and gifts that you will find on social media, on Instagram and Facebook. You can put one of those great stickers on your post uh, and show us what you've been doing so we can look at that uh, and showcase it in the grand finale. We want to see what you've been up to, what you've learned and make that more public and as a community, see uh, what, the, what the results are for all of us through the Urbat E-University, our first ever large scale digital event. Let's hear, see what you've learned and how it's been for you. So um, I'm going to hand over to Bela now. Okay, so it's, I almost can't believe it. Uh, we are coming to the last session, session seven before the grand finale uh, in our Urbeck E University. And today we speak about making results visible. If you do your action plan, if you design your action plan based on what you learned during the previous sessions at the E University, I'm sure, and you could be sure that result, results will be coming. The big question is, will you be able to make those results visible? And that's exactly what we are speaking about today. Today's objectives are the following. First, it's important to understand the role of monitoring and evaluation in the planning and implementation process, and also in the intervention logic. We would like you to also understand the importance of making results visible. Why do you need to make results visible? You need to be able to design output and result indicators, and you need to be able to design and use a simple monitoring framework. So these are the things we will discuss today, we will talk about today, and then we will also uh, practice some of the tools I will speak about. So the workshop agenda is not much different from uh, the previous sessions. We will have a 40 minutes plenary session uh, where you will focus on the results framework and intervention logic, uh, working with indicators, monitoring, control and evaluation and setting up a monitoring framework. And then you will, have, uh, you will spend time with your group uh, using practical tools to better understand and design indicators. So let's start. But before we just delve into the details of the results framework and working with indicators, let me just start by a short story. Picture this. It is six in the morning, the alarm goes off. I get up and sleepily tumble to the bathroom to have my morning shower, as I do every day. Before entering the shower, though, I steal a glance at the mirror and I don't really like what I see. I definitely put on some weight and there and then I decide that I start a weightless program. And since I 
since I learned about action planning and interventional logic at the Urbex E University, the first thing I do, I step on the scale and read 90 kilogram. Doesn't look good. Now I not just know that I'm overweight, but I can also quantify my problem. After my shower and breakfast, I sit down, grab a piece of paper uh, and, uh, and pen and draw up a simple action plan. I already envision myself standing in front of the mirror, seeing a leaner, slimmer person. I like the, I like the sight. But wait, that's not really enough. I need to be more specific with what I want. I want to lose 10 kilograms by December 31st. I know what I want to achieve, but how do I get there? I identify two specific actions. I reduce my daily calorie intake to 2000 and I start to exercise. I plan to do 150 minutes of vigorous exercise every week. Well, I'm quite satisfied. I have a plan. So I start to implement it immediately. I log my exercises, count calories, and every Sunday evening, I check back on my weekly activities, also step on the scale to monitor my progress. Wait, I actually have a monitoring system in place, use indicators, and this is just a simple weight loss program. So I believe it is just fair that when we implement an action plan aimed at significant societal changes on the urban level, we do the same. But as you will see, it should not be complicated at all. So this is my short story uh, about my weight loss journey, or at least the start of my weight loss journey. And uh, we will, from time to time, we will refer back to this uh, short story and some of the elements of this story when we talk about indicators and monitoring. But to start, when we start to discuss monitoring and indicators and intervention logic and making results visible, the first question we have to ask, why it is necessary? Why it is important? And I would like to give you three main reasons. The first one, and I really like this quote from Peter Drucker, management uh, guru. He said, if you can't measure it, you can't improve it. And that's definitely true for businesses, but not only for businesses. It's also true for urban development, societal changes. You need to be able to understand and measure the situation if you want to improve it. You need to understand really and quantify your challenges, your problems. The second reason is that we actually have lots of stakeholders who are interested in seeing results. They don't really want to see the details. They don't really want to see what it's need to be done. They want, they want to see results. Public is definitely uh, want to see results and politicians, decision makers also interested in seeing results. So making, being able to make results visible is important also to show them to the public, to the politicians and to other stakeholders. And last but not least, uh, another quote, which is quite similar from a quote, quote from Ian's uh, session. No battle plan survives first contact with enemy. Even if you have the best, the most perfect uh, action plan, integrated action plan, I'm quite sure that from time to time you have to change slightly, maybe change significantly some of the activities you are doing, some of the actions you are implementing because the environment is changing uh, or the situation is changing you are working in. So you need to be able to adapt. And we already learned it in uh, Ian's session about uh, planning actions that you need a good action plan and a good action planning process if you uh, want to be able to adapt successfully and in time. But that's not enough in itself. You also need a functioning monitoring system complete with indicators if you want to adapt successfully in time. Now, we know why making results uh, visible is important. Uh, probably it's a good idea just to take a quick look at where we are in the action planning cycle. 
And as you can see towards the end of the cycle, uh, that monitoring and assessing the progress you made is, uh, is actually presented there in the cycle. And it's towards the end of the whole process. It's after delivering actions and forcing challenges. Uh, but basically, uh, when we are talking about monitoring and assessing the progress made, we cannot just wait until the very end of the process. We have to start early. So when we are planning and identifying a coherent set of actions, when we are preparing, of our, uh, preparing our action plan, we already need to think about making results visible. We already need to think about indicators and how we will monitor the progress of our implementation. Now, this is a quick reminder. This is a, this is a picture you've already seen uh, at the previous session. This depicts the intervention logic model. Basically, the model says that you use your resources to deliver actions. The actions will uh, produce outputs. The outputs produce or at least contribute to results. And your results, if planned properly, will help you to achieve the change uh, you envisioned. And there are different elements, elements in this framework. Uh, from our perspective, what is important is the results framework, which is very important from the perspective of measurement and monitoring. But what is this results framework? Well, there are different ways to present it, but the simple way is basically this. We need to understand where are we, what's our current situation. We need to have a clear view of where do we want to go, what's the change we want to achieve. And of course, we need to have an understanding of how do we want to get there. And we, if we have a clear picture of all these elements, basically we, are, we have the most important ingredients of our results framework. This is a slightly more sophisticated way of presenting the results framework. As you can see in the results framework, you have the current situation where, where, you, face, where, where you face challenges and problems. You envision a change, uh, an improvement where you want to go. And then you have your program in the middle uh, in the frame of which you deliver actions, you uh, achieve intended results and you achieve your specific objectives. And also you have to identify different types of indicators, output and result indicators. And if you have those indicators uh, during the implementation, you, can, you need to do a monitoring and evaluation process to track your progress. But let's break down uh, the results framework and its most important elements. First and foremost, let's speak about specific objective and intended result. The specific objective is basically the expression of the change an intervention aims to achieve in an existing socioeconomic situation. So you express the change in the form of a specific objective. It, it is always based on a problem or development need. It really describes an ambition what you want to achieve. And if you want to formulate a meaningful specific objective, you need to start from the identified development needs. You need to ensure that your objective is singular and really specific. And in most cases, when we, use a when we define a specific objective, we use a des description, a verb, an action verb that expresses change to improve or to reduce or to increase if you just remember back to my weight loss journey, uh, basically the objective I want to achieve is that I want to reduce my weight by 10 kilograms by December 21st. So that's my specific objective. Now, specific objectives, and that's something we already heard, need to be smart, specific, measurable, achievable, realistically achievable, relevant to the problem, to the challenge we are dealing with. And it also has to have, a, has to be time bound, need to have a deadline uh, by the time you want to achieve your specific objective. 
and we come back to that. Uh, the next is we need to talk about outputs, and we already discussed outputs in Ian's uh, session, but just as a reminder, outputs contribute to the specific objective and uh, or result. They are the direct products of the delivery of your actions. So you do your actions and your outputs are created. So therefore they are really closely linked to the actions. Sometimes we say in uh, programs that they are what money buys. Maybe it's uh, the square meter of uh, new uh, building built or square meter of rehabilitated pub public space. So it's exactly what money buys with your actions. So far so good. Uh, but uh, the question is still there, what we are supposed to do with that and how we are supposed to use that in the action in, during our action planning journey. And uh, this, this is, I think, the most important message today. If you just take home three things, these should be the three things. Have a clear intervention logic in place, so identify your resources, actions, outputs, results, understand your challenge, and have a vision, so you have to have a clear intervention logic in place. Design your indicators and the simple monitoring framework, we will speak about that, and then just monitor the implementation. So these are the most important things you are supposed to do. It, do. But to do, to do that, we need to understand indicators, how they work, what are they, and how can we use them. So let's talk about indicators. What is it? An indicator describes the complex reality in a simplified form. And it's not necessarily quantifiable. So sometimes we think in terms of indicators as something that's a quantity, but it's not always a quantity. Sometimes it's qualitative. And statistical data does not equal indicator. The data, a number, is not an indicator yet. There's more to an indicator. Now, just let's stop for a moment for discussing quantitative and qualitative indicators. It's uh, the quantitative indicates the quantity uh, of something as its name suggests. It's a number, index, ratio, or percentage. And the good thing about quantitative indicators, it enables comparison of statuses or even between interventions and may be easily summed. So if the same type of intervention in the, is done in different cities, if you have a quantitative indicator, you can actually sum or compare the results. Whereas qualitative indicators don't show uh, numeric values, they depict the status of something in qualitative terms. But complex things may be better captured by qualitative indicators. Now, let me give you an example. If you talk about public space safety, uh, a quantitative indicator could be the number of crimes, crimes happening in public space in the city center. Uh, you can measure that and you can understand that. Qualitative could be the sense of security of people, which is quite different, but it's still important to understand. Maybe the numbers, the number of crimes is reducing and still people don't feel safe. So it's good to understand uh, why is that. And that's why it's useful to have qualitative indicators as well. As well. For monitoring purposes, quantitative indicators are slightly better, but there is no competition between the two, no either, or it's really often best to use both. Now, when you work with indicators, there are a couple of minimum requirements. What makes an indicator an indicator, not just a number or statistical data. It needs to have a uh, precise definition. It needs to have a baseline value attached to it. It needs to have a target value and it needs to have a source of information as a bare minimum. So let's see what they are. The baseline value is the value of the indicator before the policy intervention in question has started. For result indicators, it describes the pre-existing situation that your plan intends to change. And it's normally not zero, it already has a value. For output indicators, the baseline value will normally be zero. So for example, if you think back my weight loss journey, when I stepped on the scale and uh, I was uh, really uh, frightened from, uh, with what I saw, 90 kilogram, 
is the baseline value of my indicator. So that's where I start. Target value, but the target is the intended value of an indicator after the completion of the intervention or action. So you do your intervention, you implement your actions, and hopefully you achieve your target value. That's again a value. And in the case of my weight loss, weight loss journey, it's the 80 kilogram I want to achieve by the end of this December. So that's the target value, baseline target. And then there's another thing which is called milestone. Uh, you may also define one or more milestones for an indicator, especially if uh, it's a longer program, longer intervention. A milestone is an expected intermediate value of an indicator at a predefined moment during the implementation. So actually, when you compare the actual value with the milestone, it can reveal under or over performance. Again, remember my weight loss journey. If I say that by the middle of November, I want to be 85 kilogram. If in the middle of November, I step on the scale and I I see that I'm still 88, then I have a problem and I have to understand what I need to change and probably change course slightly. Whereas if I see it's, I'm, I'm 85 or 84, I'm on track, so I'm good to go, no problem. And the source of information is where you collect the actual value of the indicator, both the baseline and the target value. And normally indicators should also be smart just like specific objectives. So they need to be specific, really specific. They need to be measurable. I mean, except uh, qualitative indicators. Uh, they need to be available and achievable, and they need to be relevant and reliable. So there are two things here, not just achievable, realistic, but it's important that your number, your indicator is available. You can find it. Uh, somewhere, from somewhere, and it also has to be not just relevant, but a reliable reflection of the change. And of course, it is important to have them time bound. It have, the indicators have to have a deadline, otherwise you don't know by when you have uh, to deliver the target value. This is just an example uh, showing all these. So you have the definition, and in the case of first one, share of cycling in the model split in the city, uh, and today is 12%, but we actually want to increase it to 18% by 2024, and we know that the transport department at the local authority is preparing an annual model split survey, so we can use that as a source of information. So share of cycling in the model split, it's important that it's specific. It really describes our objective, which is to, re, uh, to increase uh, cycling in the city. We have a baseline value with a baseline year. We have a target value with a target year, and we have an exact source of information. And this is how an objective looks. Now, we talked about indicators, but it's good to understand that what types of indicators we need to work with. And there are a couple of type, types of indicators, but here we will focus on two result indicators that describe the intended results and output indicators that actually describe our outputs. So the result indicator is a measure that captures the change in the situation addressed by the specific objective. Now, sometimes the link between your intervention and the result is often just a contribution and not a direct cause and effect. So even if you uh, do all your actions, uh, create all your outputs, you might not be able to uh, achieve or meet your result, meet your target value. Because results are actually influenced by external factors as well. And again, let's think back to my weight loss journey. I eat less, I exercise uh, sufficient time, uh, but my sleep is not good. I have sleep problems. Sleep can also influence my weight loss journey. So maybe that could be an external influence. For each specific objective, you should identify a small number of result indicators. Actually, I like to think if it is possible, one specific objective should be described by one result indicators, but that's not always possible. And 
just for information, it's a really good reality check of your specific objective. So if you have a difficulty with linking uh, result indicator to your specific objective, the reason could be that you might have, you might not define the right specific objective. So you might want to go back and maybe change slightly, develop further your specific objective. Here are some examples of specific objectives. Uh, and let's take the second one, improve the energy efficiency of office buildings in the city center. That's the specific objective. And the definition of our indicator is average energy usage of office space in the city center. So office building in the city center is the, in the focus of our specific objective. And our indicator describes exactly that, the average energy usage of office space in the city center. We have a baseline value and with a baseline year, a target value of a target year. And we know that there's a regular report from the local electricity supplier company. So we use that. These are all important information when you design an indicator. It has to be really specific, really relevant and, and contain all the information that you can see here. Possible sources of information can be many things. It could be local, regional and national level statistical data. And that's useful if you can find your indicator in statistics because it's quite easy. You can also do surveys among uh, the target population. You can even interview and have focus groups more for the qualitative indicators. And storytelling, case studies, anecdotal evidence can also be useful. Again, it's more for the qualitative indicators. Now the output indicators, and just a quick reminder, what are the outputs? And the output indicator is a variable to describe the output that your action will produce. The baseline value is normally zero, but not always, there are different cases. And the target is the expected total from your action. So if you have a mentoring program for small businesses, uh, and you mentor 200 small businesses over a two-year period, that's the total of your output. And some examples, and uh, I just go through very quickly the first one, which was brought over from Ian's session. So I just looked at Ian's presentation, uh, and uh, I found this action targeted training plans for schools. Now, the indicator I identified is the total number of schools in the district with targeted training plan. I assume that this year the baseline value is zero because no school has targeted training plan, but I set out to, we set out to have in all the 12 schools of our district, those targeted training plans. So the target value is 12 by uh, 2020 and the information is coming from the Department of Education. Again, and you can see it, it's specific, it describes your action, and it has all the important elements of the uh, indicator. Now, it's good to have your indicators and it's really important because that's the first step. But once you have your indicators, you can't just lean back, you still have work to do. So you need to have a pragmatic monitoring framework to be able to track your progress. Before we talk about your monitoring framework, I think it is important to make to stop here for a moment and make a quick distinction between three things, monitoring, control and evaluation. Because in my experience, people tend to confuse them and not always understand exactly what these things mean. They are interrelated, linked, but they are different. Monitoring is a management tool uh, that track, tracks the progress in relation to the objectives. Control is a continuous review of processes and activities to prevent, eliminate irregularities, uh, fraud. And evaluation, the purpose is to reveal the impacts of the intervention in relation to the challenge to be addressed. This is a slightly more detailed comparison of the three. So as you can see, uh, the objective of the control is to examine compliance with rules and regulations. The objective of monitoring is to track your progress towards the objectives, whereas the evaluation is 
uh, about investigating the impacts of the intervention in relation to the challenges to be addressed. When do you use them? Control, it's continuous. So anytime uh, your controlling department can come to you and look at, look at your invoices, for example. So it's a continuous process during your intervention. Monitoring is also a continuous process during project delivery. So we continuously monitor your intervention and your results and outputs. Evaluation, on the other hand, uh, could be ex ante, could be interim or on ongoing, or could be ex post. Most often we hear about ex post evaluation, so something that is done after we finished our intervention. But ex ante evaluation is also something we often do, and actually this is something very similar uh, thing will be done by you as well uh, in your action planning journey, because you will have a peer review during which you will actually review your peers' action plan, another city's action plan, and you give feedback. You will evaluate it whether or not, according to your opinion, the action plan will uh, achieve the objective sets and will uh, cause the change uh, defined uh, in the plan. Now, who does it? Control could be internal exter and external, so maybe the intermediary body sends some controllers to you if it's a donor-funded project, but you also have your, uh, you could also have your internal controlling department. Monitoring is definitely internal. You do it yourself. It's a management function. It has to be built in the implementation. And uh, evaluation, again, could be external or internal. And the consequences are really different. If irregularity is detected, the uh, consequence of control is sanction. You might need to pay back your grant if there's an irregularity. Monitoring, well, when you track your progress and you understand that uh, there's a deviation, a serious deviation from your uh, plans, then you might need to change course. You might need to intervene. And evaluation is more about the learning process. So you do your evaluation, you learn from your intervention, and in the future, if a similar intervention is implemented, you can use those experiences. Now back to your monitoring framework, because that's an important tool you need to have and you need to design. It needs to be designed already at the beginning. It has to be part of your action plan. It doesn't need to be complicated at all. It could be a really simple thing. Uh, it needs to be easy to use and it needs to provide usable information in time in an easy to understand format. So for example, again, back to my weight loss journey, my monitoring uh, framework included regular measuring myself, uh, having a food diary and noting the calories I eat every day and having an exercise diary and noting the exercise I'm doing every week. And then from time to time, I reflect back uh, to uh, my performance. Now, what are the key elements of, the, of a basic monitoring framework? So these are the elements you have to design in your action plan. The precondition is a consistent intervention logic. You need to have a consistent intervention logic. And again, that's a crucial message to take home, have a consistent intervention logic from the beginning till the end. Now, once you have it in place, you need to have a set of well-designed indicators. As you've seen, it's not rocket science. It's not, it's not that difficult to design those indicators. You can use the examples here to be inspired. Uh, by, but I will also point to an urbex guide uh, from that respect. It, you need to have a simple process as well. Uh, and that process, you have to describe it in your action plan and it should at least contain who is responsible for monitoring uh, your action plan progress. Maybe it is your ULG coordinator. How is reporting done? How often? Monthly? Half a year? Uh, once a year, twice a year. Uh, so, so how often? In what format? So what is the report format? And to whom do you report? Maybe you report to your council, maybe you report to your ULG, if it's your action plan, but you have to identify that. And also you have to have 
a simple process for, uh, for deviations. So what happens if there's a major deviation from the plan? You go back to the drawing board, try to understand the reason, and then uh, how do you change your actions? Some useful tips for, uh, for designing your simple monitoring framework. The first one is some people fall into the trap of trying to identify the perfect monitoring system. It's simply not possible and it's not needed either. The monitoring system has to, have, has to be able to give you indications, but it has to be simplified. You can't describe in its all complexity everything. You have to focus, therefore, on the essentials, the most important indicators. You don't want to measure everything. It's best to keep it simple, and it's best to consider the resource time implications. Maybe you have a perfect indicator, and it's a survey indicator. So you need to do a survey every year. But the survey costs almost as much as your intervention, as your action. Maybe that's not the right way to go. Uh, make sure it is aligned with already existing monitoring systems. I know that some cities have really uh, advanced monitoring systems, so it's just good to check back and see whether you can make your monitoring framework in line with that monitoring system. And it's also useful to provide visual information. Everyone loves visual information. It helps understanding, uh, quick understanding. I just give you two examples. You can use traffic light system or you can use a dashboard type approach. So a simple traffic light table. And again, it need, doesn't need to be complicated. Uh, I just put it together using the indicators from the previous table in this presentation. You see the baseline value, you see the target value, and then uh, my uh, uh, an actual value in 2021. And the good thing about it you have the numbers, but it has color codes as well. Red indicates that it requires immediate action. We wanted to increase the use of uh, public transport, but actually it decreased. So we want to, we need to do something. Green means we are just on track. No action is needed. No intervention is needed. And amber uh, reflects that uh, yes, we might have a problem, so we need to look at it. Maybe no immediate action is necessary, but we need to take a look and understand what is happening because uh, it doesn't happen uh, as quickly as we expected or planned. And this is a simple dashboard example. It's an urban dashboard, but you can do similar things for your indicators as well. It's a good way to present your indicators to your UIG, to your decision makers. Okay, so we are nearing the end. A few words about evaluation, because I think it's important to understand. It's not mandatory in the action planning process, but depending on the complexity of your interventions, it may be really useful. As I said, it could be ex ante, interim, or ex post. And of course, the ideal scenario is that you bring in an external evaluator, but self-evaluation could also be a perfect option, maybe not evaluating every aspect of your plan, but certain aspects. And accidentally, there are some really good urbex tools for that, the Integrated Action Plan Self-Assessment Tool and the ULG Self-Assessment Tool. And these are two really useful tools you can use it for the purpose of self-assessment, but also uh, the uh, action plan self-assessment tool. You can also use it for the purpose of peer review. It's a simple Excel sheet. Uh, this is the self-assessment tool for integrated action plans. Uh, you have a number of criteria and you can score your action plan against each criteria on a scale between one and five. And you even have indications for scoring. And as a result, you will get a radar plot like this, which describes your process of action plan, content of action plan, integrated approach, finance and planning, and urbex and EU added value. So if you do it, not just at the very end, but maybe during your action planning journey, then you can identify parts where you may need some further activities, additions, you need to add some more information uh, you need, or you need to improve your action plan. And the same goes for the self-assessment tool for local groups. Uh, 
there's a similar self-assessment tool. It follows the same logic. I think this is something you could actually use from time to time on a regular basis. Maybe look at your ULG operation every second month using this simple, uh, simple self-assessment tool and see where you are in terms of frequency of meetings, organization, diversity, participation, and so on and so forth. So these are all really useful tools. And if you are still interested and if you want to dig deeper into uh, using indicators and making results visible, there's a very good urbex guidance document, performance in policymaking using the EU results framework for sustainable urban planning. There is useful information in it regarding indicators, regarding indicator systems, monitoring and evaluation. So I highly recommend it to read it when you come to preparing your uh, monitoring framework and indicators. So in summary, these are the tools the results framework, the indicator table, the UIG self-assessment tool, and the action plan self-assessment tool. And there's the urbex guide uh, as well that you can use. Now, it is a tradition now that at this point of the session, we move around a bit. And normally it is stretching. And stretching is really good, really healthy. So I highly recommend to do it. I should do it myself more. But I'm not that stretchy type of guy. So uh, I would recommend to do your favorite bit of moving around. Maybe copy the guy on the picture, or you do just some stretching, or yeah, you can do other things as well, like myself. Crank out a couple of squats. It's really good for your hip. And you can even. go down for, for some good old uh, push-ups, whatever you choose. You know? So spend a couple of seconds, move around, stretch, squat, do push-ups, whatever your favorite type of moving around. Okay, so we are now over the session, the plenary part. Uh, and we did some stretching, moving around. We are energized again. So let's talk a couple of minutes about the workshop. So in the workshop, you will work with the indicator table. Uh, and this is your most important tool. This is the table you can use in the action planning process. And the exercise is fairly simple. It has two main steps. Step one, I provided various examples of result and output indicators. So examine them carefully and I hit some errors, some flows in it. So think about smart criteria. Take a look at them. Do they have every aspect of an indicator? Are they specific enough? Are they relevant enough? Do they describe the action or the specific objective? So be really carefully uh, evaluating them, examine them carefully, spot the errors and propose improvements. And step two, if you have time, use the simple specific objectives in your MIRO board, which I provided as the second step and design result indicators and use the simple actions to design output indicators. You can even bring over one of the actions you designed in the end session. There are detailed instructions provided in the MIRO board and also your e-facilitators will help you with the process. And uh, I would say that focus on the first one if you have time for step two, great, but understand what are the mistakes, errors in the first one and then move on to the next one. And thank you very much for your attention uh, and enjoy your, uh, enjoy your, uh, group work in your small group. And yeah, this is the last such group work uh, during the e university. Thank you. Thank you so much, Baylor. That was a fantastic presentation. Lots of comments in the chat about how clear and helpful that was. And don't forget everybody, this is being recorded. So if you want to go back at some point over that presentation on how to develop your indicators and your framework, 
together possibly with your ULG you can do that uh, and the tools are in the toolbox at uh, box as Bela said. Um, Bela we had some comments about about how your personal weight loss journey was very relatable for everybody. Some get some comments about feeling guilty about their breakfast already after hearing that and also a comment that the best tool for monitoring weight loss is the mirror not the scales and we should go easy on ourselves which is quite fun. And um, there were also co some comments about um, phobia around evaluation and monitoring in, in the public sector and some tools that came in the chat about that and about how important it is to make sure that whatever results we find, they get fed back, that they're, they're used to inform policy and progress with the action plan. So some really good stuff in the chat there. And maybe we'll come back to more of that later, but it is indeed time. Can we go back to the previous slide, please? It's time to go back to, to get into your working group. So if we could move into the previous one, which has the groups in. Uh, sorry, I'm back that's, again. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> okay, that's all right. Uh, we're not I'm back in plenary yet, so I, we'll go I, the other I, way in a minute. I think everybody's got the, the idea anyway now. So it's time to go into your breakout groups. And the way you do that is following the, the link you have to group to waiting room A, B or C. Here we go, that's it. So find your personal link, go to waiting room A, B or C hold tight, get a coffee, and in literally 10 minutes, you'll go off to your working groups again and try out the exercises that Bella has just explained with your Miro board uh, and with your e-facilitator to help you. Uh, and we'll call you back into plenary at about 11.45. So um, off, time to go, get a coffee, enjoy your exercise, and we'll see you back in plenary in an hour. And thanks so much, Bella, for that great presentation. Hi, everybody, coming back to plenary. Looks like we've got 74 on board. Is Bella with us? Hi, Bella. Hi, Bella. We're coming back to plenary. How are you? Hello, everyone. Bella, can I ask you to show your screen? From that working group. I hope that was uh, a very quick run through trying to do a results framework and, and critique the results framework that Bella had put together for us. Bella, I was really happy to have the cheat sheet to know the answers because it's <laughs> it's not so obvious on that first task. But anyway, how, how are your groups getting on, Bella? Could you see from the mirror board? Yes, I, I've seen from the mirror board. Uh, they were getting on quite well, uh, although one group had some technical diff difficulties towards the end. Uh, some of the, well, actually all of the post-its they wrote and even the my post-its disappeared, so yeah. Okay. But other than that, uh, I think uh, they found most of the most of the hidden errors and flaws. So I think it was, I mean, did really well. Good. I mean, uh, we've got people 146 back. We'll, we'll we'll start again in a minute as we're getting people back from the, the working groups. But mm -hmm. in my group, um, you could tell people who are researchers and who are familiar with this, you could get to grips with it a lot quicker. Who who like looking at measurement systems. There was still some uh, difficulty separating um, output and results, just mm -hmm. getting really clear between the two. Um, but we also thought uh, actually it makes you realize that um, critiquing uh, an action table is actually a really good exercise to do in your network. Um, that each city, once they've got a results framework, could do a sort of peer review on each other's because um, it really helps. You can always spot something that, that could be improved uh, in the tables, I think. Yeah, so uh, shall we remain your shared screen with your shared screen? Or? It should be your Hello. shared screen, I think, Bella. Yes, Bella, okay. you can share your screen whenever you want. Okay, let me like just your try. Autonomous. Okay, Bella, over to you to start on, on, on the recap once you've got your slides up, yeah? Yeah, nice session, but very short. People are saying, is to, as always, we're doing things at speed to try and give you the sense of how these tools might work and uh, how to do it at local level. You would have a lot more time doing it normally um, for real, but it's just to, to get a, an idea of how it can be done well and some, some of the ba basic messages. But over to you, Bella, to start the recap, yeah? Um, working. Okay. And yes, people saying good to identify result versus output, uh, indicator versus uh, impact, outcome, lots of lots of words. But I think Bella's presentation, if you keep going back to that, that will really help people to um, 
get to grips with that framework and get the language right and, and be on a sh on the shared page about that. So Bella's just going to bring his slides up and we'll go into the final session. Can you see my slides? No, we don't yet. No. no. Okay. Let me just. Perhaps we could have the backup slides um, just so we could carry on with that. Uh, yes, let's do that. I mean... Bella, I will share the screen like this well, is no problem. And Sally, you'll ask me when you want that. Okay, to... no problem. If you could share the backup screen, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Then we can crack on. So we're just waiting to see the slides and then Bella will continue. Okay. Over to you, Bella. Um, and Morgan will change the slides for us, yeah? I'm trying to find myself now <laughs> on the screen, yeah. Okay, so uh, yeah, uh, thank you. We had a really good exercise, at least in the groups I've seen. Uh, and I'm just uh, looking uh, at some of the messages in, uh, in the chat. Nice session, but very short. It was very good to identify what is a result versus an output. Very useful session for that. As a researcher, monitoring officer found that very enjoyable. Uh, that's good to see. It was good, but short. Some more time, but nice. Lovely session. Yelena explained and clarified everything very well. So it, yeah, I understand actually that uh, working with indicators could be daunting, uh, could be quite difficult. And uh, that's why I decided to use these, uh, these find the error, spot the errors exercise, because I think that really helps to drive home what are the most important attributes of indicators. But it was really good to see you progressed uh, with your Miro boards. And of course, you can go back anytime to, to uh, your Miro board and, and do the second step if you haven't tried it. Okay, so can we move to the next one? Yes, so oh, we, you still have the homework, uh, you still have the learning memo. Uh, so please make sure that you think back uh, about, your, uh, about your experiences and key lessons from, uh, from, your this, from this session and uh, identify what you, will, what you will start, stop and continue doing and what are the key lessons, key learnings from you, answer your questions. Okay, can we move to the next one, please? And that was it from my uh, side. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for being attentive and following this, well, honestly, not easy and somewhat complicated topic and issue, but I think it's very important. And I hope I could just help you uh, a bit uh, to design your indicators and to design your, uh, your uh, monitoring framework, which I'm sure will be useful when you implement uh, your action plan. And now, so we move to the next side. And now we actually came to the last session with, uh, with this kind of topic, this kind of, this kind of content. And well, it, it's a bit sad that we are moving towards, uh, towards the end of the university. So now I just pass the microphone uh, on to Anna Maria, uh, who will just be your guide uh, during the last session, the grand finale. Anna Maria, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bella. <laughs> um... Hi, everybody. Um, I can't believe that we are in our fourth week of the e university and uh, we're very close to the grand finale. So Morgan, if you could go to the next slide. Before we get the grand finale, I was actually uh, looking forward to a, 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 a sort of big party, but I, I think we will kind of make it. We will have an additional homework for, for you for next Thursday. So we know that this is just in two weeks time. So just try to take um, actually 10 or 15 minutes for it. And what you have to do before Thursday session is to read on the website. You'll find uh, the link soon enough on five scenarios on um, our APN journey happening in 2023, so when it finished. 
and things did not go so perfectly and we need to understand why. After you read the scenarios, you will have time to think from your current role and your current APN, what you could have done starting now after the e-university to prevent these scenarios. And be prepared to share uh, some of the solutions because I'm sure that you're going to be surprised how many thoughts you have in common and how much you could build on each other's ideas. So let's see exactly what you're going to uh, analyze until, uh, next, uh, until the next session. Next slide, please. So in January, 2023, um, it means that our APNs had almost finished uh, um, uh, in six, uh, after six months. And things did not go as planned. Mm, the local EAP um, is not under implementation, the ULG is not so active, and the uh, integrated action plan remains a bit of just a document somewhere uh, in a drawer. So you will need to consider five scenarios and add more uh, why this happened. And if we could go to the next slide. Um, it happened because we didn't take into account how our lives changed right now with the COVID-19 pandemic and what happened to the thematic focus of our APNs. In a second scenario, there was actually, we were kind of tired of all the Zooms <laughs> and all the uh, transnational learning happening online. And this thought did not exactly get translated into motivation of doing things locally. The third scenario that we are going to consider is that um, actions did not have a clear financing plan and they did not tackle uh, the three pillars of sustainable development. The fourth is that maybe there was a change of leadership or um, a change of different group dynamics uh, locally, so there was no strategic support for the EAP. And the fifth is that there was strong criticism that certain uh, stakeholders were actually not involved in the ULG. So the process in itself was not, uh, uh, was not considered legitimate. All of, all of these things are a bit of doom and gloom of worst case scenario. So, sounds a bit far away from our grand finale, but it's really worthwhile to consider talking about possible failures to actually see how we could do things in the present and integrate all the learning that has been happening at quite a fast pace during, the, uh, during this, um, this last uh, three weeks. So you will find the worksheet on the e-university website and it's really nice to uh, take a bit of 10-15 minutes, do a stretch and think before you have this discussion in your breakout rooms next Thursday. I, it's also going to be uh, your last uh, discussion in, uh, in, a, in the breakout rooms and of course you've become quite, uh, quite a strong uh, group by now. Uh, and Myro pros. So be sure that you also allocate some time for goodbyes because after the breakout rooms, we're going to um, have finally the reflection and the celebration time. This is because the university is going to have, uh, the, the, our last grand finale is going to have a different format, but more about this is, uh, is, uh, set, uh, is going to be explained by Sally. So once again, I'm here to say that I'm looking forward to meet you for the grand finale, but before then, please take 10, 15 minutes to uh, try to fill in the worksheet and this homework and discuss it in your breakout rooms. Thank you and over to you, Sally, so we can see how our grand finale looks on beyond and what's different about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, could I have the next slide please, Morgan? Okay, so we're, thanks to Anna Maria, thanks to Bela for today's session. Um, just to mix things up, whilst you've all got into a really good routine of going into plenary then breakout, we're going to switch it up for Thursday. We're going to do it the opposite way around on Thursday. So the grand finale this Thursday in two days has a different format. We're going to start with the breakout room discussion and then move to plenary on a Beyond link. Uh, you'll get instructions by email, as you always do, uh, ahead of time. Perhaps we could look at the next slide, Morgan. I think that will explain a bit more. 
So with the, the basically you will start the day in breakout rooms in A, B or C, go into your working groups, then finish with the plenary session on beyond. You can see the timing on the left hand side. So we need you to join your, follow your link and join your waiting room A, B or C, take your coffee, do your stretch at 9.45 on Thursday. So 15 minutes ahead of time normally. We'll start at 10 o'clock Central European time on the dot. So we need you to be in your waiting rooms before then, please. So join at 9.45, have a chat. We will be greeted as normal in your waiting room. You'll do the exercises that Anna Maria has just uh, explained to you about basically about disaster management, a pre-mortem, looking at the things that you've learned and the things that might possibly stop you achieving the progress you want to achieve at local level. So that exercise will be done in your working groups in the hour between 10 and 11, the first hour. And it'll also be the time for you to sort of say thank you and goodbye and how to keep in touch with each other. Then we'll follow a link into Beyond as we did for the grand opening, which will be live streamed from a studio. Um, then in, in that plenary session at the end, keep your eyes on the prize, keep posting what you've learned, keep putting uh, using the tags and gifts on Twitter, on Facebook and on Instagram because uh, we'll have some surprises coming for you in that grand finale, looking, possibly looking at what you have been doing and also thinking back over the last four weeks, the last eight sessions to how far we've come and how, how we've all learned together. So join us for that, go into your working groups first, then into beyond for that session. And I think uh, everything's clear, I hope. We'll make sure you've got email and individual email so you'll understand exactly the process you have to follow on Thursday. I think that's all for now. So I'm going to say thank you again to Bela for a fantastically clear presentation on results framework that we're all going to apply to our action plans and our diet plans. So that we'll all be looking fit and healthy in a few months time, hopefully. Bella, the 2020 coronavirus extra pounds may be shed, which would be good, but also for your action plans. Thanks to Anna Maria for already explaining that exercise that you'll do on Thursday morning. And, and Anna Maria will bring us back into plenary and follow up on the exercise you've just done. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us, for staying with us. We're really looking forward to our wrap up on Thursday with you all in the grand finale. So next slide, please, Morgan. And it's thank you for today and goodbye to everybody. See you on Thursday morning. Thanks a lot. Bye. 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 Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Homework before Thursday. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Thank you, everyone. I will uh, close uh, this meeting. See you on Thursday. Bye.